In this video, we're gonna be trying to generate more sales on eBay. So what are the things that we could be doing as resellers to be able to really help align with eBay's algorithm to start getting more views, to start getting more impressions? Well, if you are new here to the channel, we focus on the basics, the basics to growing your eBay store. The things we focus on are things like title structure and things like pricing. Why do we focus on those things? Because I believe it is those two key factors that contribute to why you're not getting the sales that you should be getting. So eBay wants us to do a certain title structure and eBay wants us to price our items according to what the market demand is. So we're gonna be looking at a few eBay stores today to seeing what things that they could be doing better to start generating more sales. We're gonna be breaking down title structure and we're gonna be looking at other parameters in their listing to help get their listings more optimized to then lead to more sales. So if you want an eBay store review, just drop it in the comment section down below and we'll add you to the list. I have a couple queued up here, so we're going to get right to it. Uh, we have Save by Thrift. They had uh, put in a comment for last week's reviews. We couldn't get to it, but you are first in line today. We have you pulled up. Save by Thrift, you sold 3,000 items. You have 1,200 items in your store. Let's take a look at what we could be doing to start getting more sales. So it looks like you are a pre-owned clothing seller. Um, your pictures look really good. They look really well lit. Um, you know, we, we, uh, focus a lot on, um, you know, looking at the title and looking at pricing, but also what is the first thing that your buyer is seeing before they click on your item? That's your photo. So if your photos are too cropped in and not well lit, it might be a little bit harder to get those buyers to click on your items. You know, if you're selling pre-owned clothing, you don't really need to make your items seem better than they are, which is why I don't use the white background. I just have a nice uh, off-white cloth for my background. Um, and it looks like you're kind of doing the same. You don't have like that white cutout going on. Um, the photos look really well lit. This is getting me to want to click. So, um, that is the first uh, first little detail noticing in your store. Um, let's first start by going into your uh, sell-through rate to kind of get a good idea on how much uh, volume you're moving through this type of store. So with 1,200 items, a good metric to go by is like a 1% rule to be able to really see if your store's really kicking butt or if it needs some work. So by 1%, um, that is just the metric that I use to see if a store is really right on track with your pricing, with the in-demand items, with good sell-through rates. So um, 1% of 1,200, right? We'd be looking for a lot, uh, about 12 sales a day, depending on what your listing habit looks like. So let's just go and check your solds real quick and see what we're working with. So today you've already had one, two, three, four, five, five sales, and let's just kind of go from the past few days so we get an idea on your average. Uh, the second you had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine sales, very good, and then we'll just go through the first to give us a bit more information here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 10, 11, 12. Okay, cool. Yeah, let's just say you're a little less than the 1% average. I don't know what your listing goal is, so maybe if you want to put that in the comment section, I do really believe that it's your consistency in your listings that's really going to go in hand with the amount that you're going to be selling every day. So if you have 1,200 items and you're not listing every day, it's going to be harder for you to generate a 1% sell-through rate through your store. So you'd ideally like to be listing every day to keep the algorithm happy and well-fed, to keep those consistent impressions coming your way. So let's go ahead and do a quick listing audit of what you kind of got going on here. Um, seems like you do some plush. So that's cool. I um, mean, you need to have some shoes. That's great. So let's just look at a few of your listings here. Um, let's take one pair of jeans and let's see. How about this dress? Okay, so uh, these jeans, they're, they're Levi's, right? So we're going to try to get into the mind of the buyer. That is the whole key to how eBay's search algorithm works. It's a search-based algorithm. So we need to be able to figure out what is the majority and the common buyers typing in on eBay to find the items that they're looking for. So 
This is a perfect example. Levi's Strauss and Company. Are more people typing in Levi's Strauss and Company or are they typing in Levi's? So are they typing in Levi's Strauss and Company jeans or are they typing in Levi's jeans? So I'm going to go with Levi's jeans on that one. I know the brand is Levi's Strauss and Company, but we're trying to get into the mind of the majority of buyers. This is what they're searching for. So Levi's jeans men's followed by the size. So you have some good keywords here. You just got to kind of rearrange the title. So Levi's jeans, men's, and then I would followed by the men's, we're putting the size. And then you're going to want to put in all uh, accurate keywords that are going to help describe your item. We really need to focus on brand, item, gender, size, just like that. Brand, item, gender, size. So what is the brand that the majority of buyers are typing in? Because you have American Eagle Outfitters. Well, I just put American Eagle. I don't put American Eagle Outfitters. And there's Columbia Sportswear. I don't put Columbia Sportswear. I just put Columbia. So those are a few things, little details that actually can make a big difference. Because remember, eBay's algorithm is a search-based algorithm. So if you can align your title to match as close as possible to the common buyers, the majority of the buyers out there, then you're going to be set up for success for getting more views. Not sales, views, but views can lead to sales. And sometimes if you get a ton of views and no sales, then actually eBay will not like you and they'll suppress your listing because they're wondering why are we sending traffic to this page to this listing and they're clicking off so then that's where the second part of the key factor is is price because you might have a great title you might have great uh, photos but if you're pricing your items incorrectly it will never sell so we're going back into it let's look at what we could be doing better i think your photos look great they're, i don't think you need to do anything with your photos they look well lit you have measurements in your photos that is a really 30 percent to 50% of the process of getting good photos, getting good measurements as well. And it looks like you're listing from the computer, which is awesome because you have good condition. Behind left leg has a small white stain. Beautiful. That's perfect. And you have this item on a markdown sale, it seems like, so that's great. And also you have some kind of coupon up here, 24% off coupon. Your shipping looks on point and you offer returns. Those are all those little things that add up like returns and having your shipping price be competitive, having best offer turned on. Some people don't even have best offer turned on and you are missing out on so many potential sales if you do not have best offer turned on. So, um, let's go back into what do you got going on with your item specifics and you have a, a good couple things here in your product description. Um, this kind of we talked about last week was measurements. Putting measurements in your um, additional item specifics rather than in your product description is going to help you save a lot of time. Because think about the time it takes to have to fill out the additional item specifics, put in the measured size of what you measured for your jeans, and then going into the product description and then putting in the waist size and the inseam and, and everything. So helping you save a little bit more time by just putting the measured size in your additional item specifics will really eliminate the need to have to put size again back in the product description but I think you have overall some decent stuff as far as like you have your condition you have general wear good condition normal signs of wear um, please view all pictures of the jeans and message me if you have questions yeah and these things too like color dark wash style straight leg I would eliminate that too just to help save you more time because all this stuff can just go into the item specifics so you know, just to help save you more time when you're doing your listings, um, that is going to be helpful. So let's look at your uh, dress here. You have a gap, blue, distressed, denim, button front, sleeveless, jean dress. So the, the most important part of the title, you have it as like the 10th word. I would do gap dress, women's, and then size four. So um, you have good keywords. It's just they're in the wrong order. So gap dress four or women's four. And I don't put the word size. And um, that's kind of how we want to structure our title. So sleeveless, button front, very good. 
you have measurements. That's awesome. The photo quality looks good. Um, a little bit blurry, but that's okay. In good condition, you have up to 60% off. Wow. And um, six sixty five, dollars probably a first-class shipping right there. And 60-day returns. Very good. So, yeah, just to help eliminate some of those extra things that you're doing, you're putting in the color and the size on uh, in the product description, I just wouldn't do that. I would just put as much as you could in the uh, additional item specifics. So um, I don't know how much you're listing every day. Let's see what you had listed so far today. You did one, two, three, four, five, six. So six listings. Um, I really do believe that listing every day is going to be the key contributor to helping you get more sales, especially with a 1300 item store. Um, just keep on listing every day and, um, you're going to really have to be consistent with that. But things that you could do right now, go into your listing page, go into your bulk editor after you select 200 of your oldest listings and start reworking all the title structures to line up with brand, item, gender, size. So you might have 90% of the work done with all your keywords and everything that's going to accurately describe your item, but you're going to want to rearrange all of those keywords to match brand, item, gender, size, and go through all of those oldest listings, and you'll be surprised on how much of an impact just by doing that is going to make. Um, your pricing, you know, that's going to have to be, you know, I hope you're you're looking up comps before you buy items. Um, it seems like you have a good bit of stuff on discount. Um, you know, with the amount that you're selling, just what, from what we checked just the last few days, um, you know, that's a really red flag for me is if you have a 1300 item store and you're selling two, three, four items a day on average over like a rolling month, uh, uh over the course of a month, um, that's going to be more of like a red flag of price because, if you're not following in the market demand of what a buyer is willing to pay, it's going to be really hard for you to sell an item no matter the title, right? Title helps your item get found. Price helps your item get purchased. And it's simple economics, um, supply and demand. What is the demand side of, of the items that we're listing? What is that? What does that look like? What is the median average sale price for a buyer to pay for the items that I'm listing. That you really need to understand and figure out. Otherwise, no matter how you're pricing your items, if you're not doing the research and looking up the market demand for your items, you can't just be making up prices and expecting them to sell. So um, just f figure that out. Figure out what you're doing with your pricing. Um, but for the most part, um, it doesn't look too outrageous on your store. I hope that was helpful. Let's get into the chat. Uh, Maxon, I hope I said that right. I have your store on the queue. We are coming up to it. So yeah, if you have questions, if you want to leave a little bit about what you're doing, what does your listing, uh, habit look like? Uh, how long have you been reselling? Just give a little brief description that will be helpful. Elio Mora. Hey, bud. Appreciate your content. I appreciate you. I appreciate everyone coming in, watching. Smash like if you're getting value. And if you missed the first part of it, if you do want an eBay store review, just drop it in the comment section and I will add you to the list. Marcus, what is going on? Hope you're doing well. Hardest working reseller on the tube right here. Marcus, doing 70, 75 listings a day, crushing it. You're doing great. Love you, brother. Uh, Righteous Monkey tapped in. Yes. Hashtag Bonos. Love it. Uh, Stepmo. Hey, Butte. Thanks again for helping us on how to do the perfect listings. Yeah, you're welcome. Thanks for coming in. I, you come in every so often. I appreciate your support. I appreciate you watching. Please subscribe and press the like button. Yes, thank you. Uh, we do this every week. You know, So if you don't get a store review this week, I will make note and we will add you to next week's store review. But we're going to keep on. We're getting good pace here. We are going to continue to go as fast as possible. So uh, Marie's Closet um, also wanted a store review. We didn't get to her last week, but we are here now. You've sold about 3,000 items, and you have an 1,000-item store. Very cool. It looks like you're doing like some kind of white background for your photos. Um, looks great. I think the lighting looks beautiful. 
Everything looks well presented. You are using a mannequin. How is that going for you? And do you find that you are taking a little bit more time with your photos because you have to get the clothes on and off the mannequin? How has that worked for you? Um, I've had I've heard mixed reviews with that. Um, right off the bat, this Carl Lagerfeld uh, purse or tote is uh, you just got to put a space between that because uh, misspelled words, especially brands will usually never be found because they are misspelled. So I um, want to just fix that. But photos look good. Now let's get into what you're selling and how many you're selling and how many you're listing. So today you listed one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So nine, maybe ten. I might have miscounted. So let's say you're doing ten listings a day. You sold one today, none yesterday, Four on the first and two on the thirtieth, two on the twenty ninth, on the twenty eighth, no sales, on the twenty sixth, no sales. Okay, so just wondering what your listing habit looks like. Um, you know, if you are selling two or three items a day and you have a thousand item store, that is clearly a sign to me to really pump the brakes, go back in and reanalyze my store to be able to figure out what am I doing wrong? What things can I be doing better? Maybe double checking the price, double checking item specifics in my titles. Um, because if you're got a thousand item store and you're selling two, three items a day and you're going days without even any sales, that's going to be a sign to me to figure out what should I be doing in my store to go back to be able to help generate more sales. So we're going to help you with that right now. We're going to be checking out first. We're going to accept this offer. Sorry, but eBay's calling. So let's look at some of your newest listings and see what we could be doing. I always suggest going back with your oldest listings first because you want to do that because that's usually when you were the newest, the freshest. You most likely didn't really know too much about the eBay platform. So going back, fixing your oldest listings first will help give those listings kind of new life, restructuring the titles, maybe checking some item specifics that you have learned about because you've been listing on eBay consistently, um, and then going back and double-checking the price can really help give new life to those oldest listings because it doesn't take long for eBay to start suppressing your listings. I would say between three and four months after no sales, less and less views, less traction on that item, eBay's going to start suppressing that item, um, especially if it's just a common item that's like a, you know, not so much in demand. You know, let's just say a Nike sweater. If it's out under, or if it's overpriced and doesn't have the correct title structure, then that Nike sweater is slowly going to fall back into the page 89. Uh, no one's going to page 89 for a Nike sweater. So doing things like going back, fixing the title structure, checking the price, making sure all the item specifics that are relevant are checked is really going to help you. And that's something that you could do right now to start getting more sales. So uh, let's just look at some of your skirts and let's go down here and let's look at these Chico's Travelers. So this skirt, um, you know, photos look good. We've said that and you got measurements. You got a picture of the condition tag. Very good. Very good. Um, and I think your title structure is on point here. So L.L. Bean skirt women's. I wouldn't use the size and um, you would put 18 and you got nautical. Very good. Front pockets. Um, you got anchor print. Very good. Very good. So very, very good keywords. I would exclude the word size and then maybe try to figure putting in maybe uh, if you could squeeze in the material, you could put cotton. Um, that could be a good replacement for the word size. You're listing from the computer because you have a pre, uh, pre-owned condition with a little blurb there. Very good pre-owned condition. No visible flaws. Very nice. Uh, $24.99. Um, that's great. I personally would sell it between $14 and $17, but you know, $24.99 that is okay. Size 18, so it is a bigger size. That's good. Your shipping looks on point because this would be shipped first class, so $5.95 is what I would charge for shipping, or $6.95 since we are going to see constant increases in postage. That's been going on since the dawn of time. They have never, never in USPS history has there been a reduction 
in postage. So just for example, it will continue to go up. So 30-day returns. Awesome. And uh, let's see, you got your little thing here. So I've noticed a lot of people are doing this. Um, I don't do that just because it would take me so much more time adding in the measurements of like the waist and the length. Um, what I do is I say, please see photos for exact measurements. Um, and I know when you are listing skirts um, on the listing uh, eBay platform, you don't have an option for waist and length under the additional item specifics. So you could just continue to do that. But for things like jeans and pants, even t-shirts, you don't need to be putting pit to pit measurement and collar to cuff measurement. It just will take a lot of time to have to go through every listing and do that. So um, otherwise, very good. I think just working on some of your titles. Let's see, you got these Chico's travelers, kind of like these leggings, pull on pants. Um, so I would just, the same thing, the, these are pants, right, is what they are generally. So it would be going Chico's pants, women's, two, and then uh, you're the rest of your keywords. And if you're not familiar with Chico's, and maybe you're a new reseller, Chico's has different sizing. Um, so you're going to need to go to the Chico's website to their conversion and be able to put in Chico size, but also the conventional size for these pair of pants um, because not everyone is familiar with Chico sizing. So you want to put both the conventional, which is 12 to 14 here, which would be like a large and size two. And then I would use the conventional sizing 12 to 14 in my item specifics. So very good though. Um, so Chico's pants, women's two, and then I'd go conventional, 12 to 14, brown, jersey, knit, and maybe uh, pull on as some keywords. So um, very good. I just think a little bit of structuring on your titles. And, and then, like I said, you don't need to put these uh, extra additional item specifics in your product description because you could just put that here. See, you have waist size right here, 32, and you have inseam right there, 27. So no need to put that again in the product description. Uh, just trying to help you save a little bit more time. So hopefully that that was helpful. I would just go in, use as many keywords as you can. You have a Susan Graver M Petite Animal Print Maxi Skirt right here. Um, try to use as many keywords as you can. eBay, eBay gives us third, uh, 80 characters per title that if you're not taking advantage of using all of those characters, you're kind of missing out and doing your your items uh, a disservice by not having as many keywords as you can that are going to accurately describe your item. So try to figure out what are some other keywords that you could be doing that are relevant to this item. So, um, you know, just coming up with some more keywords is going to help you get more sales. So you have this Victoria's Secret uh, silver wristlet wallet. There could be some more keywords there. Um, a few other things, you know, um, fossil floral zip around wallet. There could be a few more keywords there. Uh, Mellow Day Women's 3X Green Floral Long Sleeve. So I would put things like Sweetheart Neck, uh, Peasant. I'd put Pullover. I would put um, whatever the material was, maybe polyester, it if it has a stretch to it. So those are those things that I would be adding in there just to really help get more traction on my items. So I hope that that was helpful. I would just start working on some of your oldest titles first to really start getting some more momentum in your store. So getting back into it. Know what, by the way, started selling on eBay 1st of January 2022. Awesome. That's good. Um, everyone starts somewhere, right? Um, but I guess the main point of doing these reviews is to help you start the best way possible. Creating, maybe you haven't even listed on eBay before, but our goal here is to try to get you to do the most perfect listing first, so then you can start to sell similar off of your own listings rather than going to look at other people's listings, which can be full of mistakes that it's going to be harder to go back and correct later than you just trying to do the best, most perfect listing now. So everyone starts somewhere, and that's good that you're making progress. Maxon says, Max is good. I started reselling back in September last year, just started with my own things. Yep. 
Everyone uh, should should do that. Start with your own things around the home. And now, friends, family, and neighbors leave things for me. Very good. I have mostly clothes and hard wood right now. Very good. Yeah, that's good. Do you have like an ideal uh, direction you want to go? What is your goal as far as getting on eBay? Um, I really do believe, you know, selling everything to start is really good. It really helps you get familiar with what you want to list, what you want to ship. But then there comes to a time where once you get so big as an everything seller, you're going to figure out kind of a direction that you need to go. Um, because you can make six figures selling everything, but it's going to take a lot more time of testing, put away, shipping, where when you want to take that next level of maybe going from 100000 to 500000 a year, you want to maybe start to focus in on a certain category category you know maybe it's uh you know certain electronics or certain trading cards certain things that you're going to want to be able to make your processes a little bit faster so you said uh maxon you said i only have two days off from my day job and i recently started using those days to draft 14 items and list two a day very good really just started this last week and i was only listing on wednesday and thursday three to four listings very good yeah so um this is the way, you know, you said it so good too. And, uh, there's a lady that, um, is in our Patreon that, um, you know, she has also a full-time job and, but she's been doing great. She's been consistent listing one a day to start. And now she's at two a day for the last few months. And now she's ready to go from two a day to four a day because after months of mastering the process, she's been able to really dominate the platform, know what to pick up, what to leave behind. She's not growing too fast and, um, really getting the fact of getting listings up every day. So if you work a full-time job something beneficial for you is you can take your days off or maybe when you get home from your job um, knock out maybe a week's worth of listings uh, knock out the, the entire amount so so what I suggest is that if you want to be active every day on eBay and you want to start getting one sale a day on eBay just start with seven listings a week so however you could fit that in your schedule if you want to do one listing a day and launch it from your draft bank or schedule it out do that but also too if you have a part-time or a full-time job Job, doing those seven listings around your schedule can really help you start gain momentum in your eBay store as you start to scale that up. Maybe you'll go from one listing a day to two listings a day, but always be in mind that you want to at least either have some items drafted or or be a couple days ahead um, of your listing habit. So um, if you do have a full-time job, try to schedule in, how can I be active all week on eBay, but maybe just put one days of work worth it, you know, worth the, for the whole week. So seven listings, one day, knock it out, and then draft the six, and then just launch everyone every day can really help you start gain traction versus launching all seven of those listings in one day. And then maybe you have a good sales for one day, and then it slowly tapers off. It really is the key to being successful on eBay is listing every day. Do you need to list every day to make sales every day? No. But if you want to maximize the platform, it is good to start listing every day so max on you say at this point i have only purchased maybe eight things for resale i appreciate all you do thank you for the store review yeah you're welcome you know um if you're just getting started don't be discouraged by any of the numbers or any of the sales it does take a few months of listing consistently um, every day to be able to really have eBay trust you with more and it makes sense from a business point of view right if you were eBay and, and you are really trying to protect your namesake, if someone starts listing 50 items a day and they're expecting 50 sales a day, but they can't even handle shipping out four items a day, so why would eBay give you the traffic if you can't even handle four sales a day? So eBay wants to trust you with more and more, and they're just going to add a little bit more to your plate. I track my average sales per day every month for two and a half years, and you can see the growth is like, at first, we were selling two and a half a day, and then it was like four and a half a day, and then months later, it was like six and a half a day. It was just been this slowly incline, you know, and, and that's how eBay is. They want to really see and trust you with, hey, we're going to send you the traffic. Can you handle the rest? That's what they're, that's what they're trying to see with you when you are being consistent. Save by Thrift. Hola, I got to your store earlier. Um, if you want to check it out on the replay, 
Um, I hope that it was helpful for you. And then if you have any questions too, just leave a comment and I can go into it with uh, further detail for you. Uh, Maxon says hard goods. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I was thinking because you said hard woods, um, but I just thought hard goods. That That's good. Or hardwood reseller. That's fine too. Um, I think clothing and shoes are where I want to go. Yeah. The main reason why I picked clothing is because it is one of the most abundant uh, resources out there, right? It's everywhere. Walk into a thrift store. What do you see? Clothing. Walk to a garage sale. What do you see? Clothing. And not only is it there in abundance, but it's usually the cheapest thing to find. So, yeah, I would suggest figuring out some type of, it doesn't have to be now, but maybe a couple months down the road, hey, now I'm going to start picking up more clothing, more shoes. Um, start to have some type of direction. Because if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. And that's a dangerous dangerous thing to play that game. So Stepmo says, since I started on what Bose advises, I noticed on my sales increase. Awesome. Yeah, um, you know, th this is not... Um, too in-depth type of uh, training. It's very basic, right? But it is the basics that really lead to tremendous results. Like we're just looking at titles. We're just looking at pricing. But it is those things that really do help you get more sales. So um, it's, it's really a basic concept. But when you look at all professional athletes and professionals in general, what do they practice? They practice the basics. The basics are your foundation. And if you're not practicing the foundational basics of growing anything, anything in life, relationships, money management, time management, eBay businesses, if you're not mastering the basics, that foundation is going to have a crack on it. And what happens to a building with a cracked foundation? It is condemned. So we must have a perfect foundation to build off of. So we're focusing on basics so that you could continue to build on top of that foundation. It is very important. And if you go back and look at my store when I first started, my foundation was shaky. So I slowed things down. I make sure that I mastered the basics with title structure and knowing how to price items. Elio says, I do 25 a day with a full-time job. Very good. Nice. Uh, that takes some good time management. I applaud you for that, for sure. Uh, I list 100 on Saturday and 75 on Sunday. It's a grind, but works for me. Yes, perfect example of what we were just talking about. eBay, one of, just reselling in general, whatever platform you're using, the best part is that you can really mold it to fit your schedule. If you're a night owl, do it when you're staying up till 2 in the morning. If you are an early riser, get it done at 4 a.m. That's the beauty of eBay. You know, there's really no excuse but to just put in the time and effort and you will get faster. So if you are working a full time, um, like my friend here, Elio, is crushing it. He's doing most of his work on his days off, but then he's probably drafting the rest or scheduling out the rest. So when he's out working, he's making money on eBay, and that's a beautiful thing. So he does that to keep consistent in eBay by listing every day, 25 a day. It's very good, very good strategy. Know what says, I also only sell part-time because I have a full-time job. I've consistently listed five items daily for the past three months. I've definitely seen an increase in sales since I started doing this. Yes. Yeah, 100%. Uh, Elio says, just got to use the draft bank for the whole week. That's the trick. Yeah. Yeah, also the draft bank is only it has a time limit. So uh, over 30 days, you'll start to see photos disappear. You'll start to see your listings kind of get a little wonky. So only use the draft bank for maybe a short-term type of deal, and otherwise you could schedule listings out, uh, I believe, up till 45 days for listings um, to be scheduled, or 21 days, one or the other. I know it's not a lot of time, which is unfortunate. So Ariel Enterprise also reached out. This person has some experience. 17,000 items sold on eBay. That is awesome. Beautiful. You love to see it. And they only have 127 items. So maybe they had shut down their store and restarted. I don't know what is going on, but you have sold a good bit of items. And with 127 items in your store, it seems to me like maybe you made a shift or maybe you're just picking up really good items. So um, right off the bat, um, photos look good. And it seems like you are a big fan of Carhartt. Who isn't? That is awesome. Um, 
let's just kind of take a look at what you're uh, listing daily and what you're selling daily. You are listing one, two, three, four, five, five items today. Very good. Oh, that was five items yesterday. Um, and then you sold, you sold one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven items yesterday with a 140 item store. That's amazing. That's great. So on the 1st of May, you had one sell. And then uh, on the 30th, you had two. Um, on the 28th, you had one. And then you kind of went without a few days without a sale. What does your listing habit look like? And what kind of direction do you want to be going? Because, you know, you had a great day on the 2nd, but then it seems like you had a few missing days there. But also, too, you have 127 items in your store. And what is 1% of 127 items? 1.2 sales a day. So if you could just manage one to two sales a day, you're going to be doing really good at this rate. So let's kind of look at some of your titles and go back in to fix that. Uh, right. So uh, let's just look at this, for example. <clears throat> you have really good items, and that's 90% of the battle is finding good items, right? So let's take a look at a pair of jeans and this button-up shirt. So uh, right off the bat, these... Right? Um, I, I really do think that the title is good on this. Um, Carhartt FR Pants Men's 34. I think the only little adjustment that I would make is I would just put Carhartt Pants Men's 34, and then right after 34, I would either put FR or Flame Resistant right after the size, and then the rest of the keywords look good. Great price. I really think that is a good price, $24.99. Uh, you're not asking too much for these, and they seem like they're in okay condition. You might be listing from the phone because I don't see any elaboration on the condition description. You offer free re or you offer free returns, and you have a good shipping price. That is good, and you have measurements. This is key. Very good, very good. I think your photos look good. Um, looks like you're doing them maybe on a flat lay setup, or maybe that's a table that you have. Um, the main thing we're looking for are the photos is just, uh, is it clear? Can you see everything? Is it is the colors accurate? Those are the main things. So you got a great amount of item specifics. Very good. And I like your, your product description. Almost like the less words, the better. You know, you really just want to state your policy. You know, this is uh, clean and inspected per eBay guidelines. Uh, I offer free uh, returns, uh, same-day shipping, uh, you know, those same type of policies that you stand by, that's what you're going to want to put in your product description. Um, any kind of details about the item, I would try to just include as much as possible in the additional item specifics. But yeah, just a quick little fix on this title, Carhartt Pants, Men's 34, and then Flame Resistant. That's how I would go about that. Um, so this title also looks good. But Carhartt shirt men's XL, and that's how I would fix that one. I think the price is really good on that. Um, very good price. Carhartt XL. It has an embroidery, and it looks like it had a stain on the pocket that you that you detail with a dime. That's awesome. Um, Eight ninety nine shipping uh, for this shirt. It's kind of hard to tell. Um, Carhartt, known for made, making heavy-duty, heavy-weight shirts. So it does look like this would be shipped first class, but if it is heavyweight and it's an XL, good thing uh, to ship this priority just in case. So very good, and you are marking the flaws with some kind of marker. That's good. Um, small stains, minimal wear. It looks like there was a hole. Um, I usually note that in my uh, condition description if there's a hole because uh, a buyer there the traditional buyers they love not to read so they might be surprised if there is a hole but also too carhartt shirts are usually wor worn by you know people who are working so maybe it's not much of a big of a deal so um, but I would definitely include that type of stuff in my condition description or product description that, hey, there's some paint stains, there's a hole, because people will go crazy. They will go crazy. So uh, 
just to help you out with that. But yeah, in quick switch of the title, little, little rearranging there, and that's about it. Let's take a look at a few other things that you have. Um, yeah, so any of the flame resistant, I would just put Carhartt pants and then flame resistant as a keyword. It will still be found. So um, great stuff. I mean, it, you, you know, Carhartt is is it's Carhartt. You know, you're you're uh, gonna get good price for it. It's not you don't have to be so picky about the stains and the holes because it does tend to sell better sometimes with stains and holes. So, and I think your pricing looks really good. Um, these Sintes uh, workwear pants, I would put Sintes pants, men's thirty six. So just kind of high visibility, I would put towards the end of the title. And uh, True Religion Jeans, Men's 34, I think that title is great. I usually don't put the RN number or product numbers in the title, um, but if it is a particular one like the Ricky Relax Straight, maybe you did good by that. But I would usually try to find other keywords to help describe that item better because less and less people might be typing in the RN number to find a pair of True Religion Jeans. Bulwark FR Shirt. Like I said, put flame resistant towards uh, the end after size, and it'd be bulwark shirt, men's large. There you go. And you don't need to put excellent condition. I never put that in my title because buyers aren't typing in. Less and less buyers are typing that in, right? You want it to stick with keywords like flat pockets, workwear, beige, cotton blend. You know, uh, there looks like there's an embroidery up there. So those are those things that are going to help point to your item a little bit better. Um, vintage Michael Gerard cardigan. So anytime it's a cardigan, I call it a sweater, and then I use cardigan as a keyword. So vintage Michael Gerard Gerald sweater, men's large, and then you put cardigan, Kuji, Cosby. You could do grandpa grandpa core. That's a good one too. So yeah, just looks like your titles are fine. They just need to be rearranged a little bit. So hopefully that was helpful, and we will get into the next store after we get caught up. So Rachel's flipping in East Tennessee. What's going on? I'm listing all the time, and I feel defended. Sales pick up, and then nothing. I researched other seller stores to see what I'm doing wrong, and I still cannot figure it out. So if you want to drop your store name, uh, I could definitely you know, take a look at it, but kind of just pretend that I'm reviewing your store and just go back to look at your titles. Go to your oldest listings. That's going to give you the biggest red flag of like, oh my goodness, my oldest listings. You know, they're, they're, if you go back and look at my oldest listings, they're just like, whoa, you know, why did I even pick that brand up in the first place is what I always ask myself. But, um, go to your oldest listings, go and structure your titles, brand, item, gender, size. That doesn't mean you need to just redo your whole titles because you might have a good title there. It just needs to be restructured, moving some pieces around. That's all. So, um, but yeah, so don't feel discouraged. You know, you got items up, you got them photographed. Now the part of what can we do now is going back and fixing some titles. So hopefully that, that could be helpful. And if you want a store review, just drop it in the comments. Peggy says, Bo, a big thank you for all your advice. I've been reselling clothing for two years now, and after watching you and following your advice, my sales have really taken off. Nice. That's really good to hear. This is why I'm here, is to help you guys, no matter where you're at in your reseller life, just please take a little bit of what I'm saying and start to apply it to your store, and you will see the difference. This is just what I've noticed in my experience in reselling. Um, you know, for a little over 24 uh, months now, uh, we have been putting this practice in place with working on title structure, working on pricing, and those two key factors have led us to getting more sales on eBay. So that those things there is sounds so basic, right? But it really is important to really look at the basics and how can you start getting more sales and start engaging with the algorithm. So just going back, fixing some titles, and you will be surprised on just doing that helps you out. So uh, Rachel says, thank you. Yeah, so jumping into the next store here, uh, the home stretch. I hope you're still watching. You had left, uh, yeah, so Max on, uh, I hope you're still here. We're jumping into it. I know you just kind of started, and you said you got a lot of items for free. So let's take a look at what items you're picking up and putting in your store. Um, 
you know, a lot of the things that you want to do when you first get a store is you just want to list everything, right? You want to list any brand that comes, anything that comes your way. And while in theory that sounds good, it really in the long run is going to bring down your store as far as the metrics. So you don't want to be listing brands that maybe are sold at Target or Walmart, some of those lower end brands to start. You know, maybe, you know, years down the road, you could start to pick up maybe some patterns, uh, some brands with certain patterns, you know, based on those lower tier brands. But to start, you don't want to do that because it's really those brands already kind of suck. To, to tell you the truth, the you know, the, the Croft and Barrow, Mossimo, I'm seeing a few in your store. Um, it's really going to hurt your store to start. So what you'd want to do is really have some strict standards set for your store of like if the sell-through rate is not 50% and if the average sale price isn't at least $12 and above, I'm not going to spend time taking the photos, doing the listing, because it's really not worth your time. So you want to focus on those items that have a good average sale price and that have good sell-through rates, better items to start. And you could always branch out your brand list later on as you go. So you are still here. That's very good. Um, so your photos look good. Your photos look clear. Uh, you're taking a picture of the whole item. That's good. Um... How are you pricing your items? Are you looking up uh, comps before you price them? How do you go about doing that? Let's take a look at a few of your listings just so we could get an idea on how your uh, the inside parts of your listing. How do they look? So uh, you're, you're you're just getting started. So you know, eighty three items. Let's see. You sold one the other day and then on the 21st. Yeah, so getting consistent on your listing habit is really going to make a big difference for you. And you said you, you did say you were selling some hard goods or listing some hard goods. That's also going to be kind of hard for eBay to give you. They don't know where to send the traffic. So if you're listing a piano and a, a whistle and a, a wig and a cardigan, you know, all these different things, eBay wants to see you be consistent in the same category over and over again. So if you're not doing that, it's going to be hard for eBay to figure out where to send the traffic because they don't know what you're listing that day. So that's going to be, it could be good to start to get some cash flow in your store. But really, if you're wanting to do shoes and clothing, like you said, try to at least list one piece of clothing and one pair of shoes in your store every day. So that way you stay active in those categories. So um, if you can, try, because that is going to really be helpful for eBay to understand where to send the traffic to. Um so you say, I look at comps and try to price a bit down. Yeah. So I always search when I'm searching comps, the solds, I sort from highest to lowest. That's after I hit the sold and completed button, I then go to the top right hand corner and go highest to lowest. And then what I do is I try to scroll all the way down and I try to, if, if it's out of 20 pages, I'm looking to go on page 10. I'm looking for the median average sale price of that item. So I'm trying to pick in the middle so I know where I could price my items. Some items that have high sell-through rates, I stick with the high, the top of the market. Some items that have low sell-through rates, I'm going to middle to the low end of the market because I want that item moved as quick as possible. So, Shaquana, welcome to the party. This is party time here. I hope you're doing well. She says, Patreon member here, on track to becoming top rated this month since I joined the group. Yeah, you're crushing it. Um, just really cool to see your progress. You know, from just one a day to now, you're going to be hitting four a day here coming up. It's really going to be cool to see how your store reacts to that, and we appreciate you. So, um, yeah, just kind of jumping into some of your listings, this Express Jacket. Um, you know, you're going to want to take as many photos as possible. I, I know you just started, but go on Amazon, order a yardstick. You could get one for like two bucks, free shipping on Amazon. And then that yardstick will help you get some more photos in your listing by taking photos of the measurements. So you're going to do the pit to pit. You're going to do the, the collar to the hem. And then you're going to do the length, which is the collar to the bottom hem. Or So those are the, those are the ones you're going to add into your listing. Um, so having that should give you around 8 to 12 photos. That's a really good ballpark range to be in when you're doing clothing. 
Um, so the title, Express Jacket Women's. That's how I'm going to be going with it. And it's a three or a four size. So you're going to do Express Jacket Women's 3-4. And then the rest of the keywords are great. Um, your shipping, you might need to take a look at that because your shipping seems a little high. And this does happen from time to time with a lot of other newer eBayers. They usually will just uh, pick calculated shipping, and I don't know if that's what you have here, but calculated shipping is really going to skew a lot of the shipping prices. It may be great for the people that live within your state, but really bad for people that live outside the state because it's going to be calculating on the higher side. So if I want to buy this jacket right now and I live in Oregon and you live in California, it's going to cost almost $18 to ship this jacket to me when the jacket's only $19.99. So that right there is going to disqualify it. 99% of the buyers because they don't want to pay that shipping price. And if this were my item, I could easily fit this in a f legal flat rate envelope and I would be charged $7.90 and then on eBay and my shipping price that I charge to the buyer would be uh, $8.95. So I would charge $8.95 to the buyer. So Go back in, fix some of your uh, shipping policies. Uh, I just have a flat rate shipping policy. I don't use business policies. I just have, because I sell the same things. I sell t-shirts, I sell p jeans, I sell jackets and shoes. So I have a flat price for all of those items. So yeah, just go in, change the shipping price, reword this title to brand, item, gender, size, and start applying that to all your listings. You have these Levi's shorts. These are Levi's, right? So I would put Levi's shorts. I wouldn't put Levi's Str Strauss and Company. I don't ever do that. So Levi's shorts, men's 34, and the rest looks good. Um, you could put uh, military, army, uh, camo, camouflage, very good. But then again, your shipping price. The, the price itself is okay. That's a good price. But the shipping price kills the deal. These will fit in a flat rate envelope on eBay. They will charge you $760, and I charge the buyer $895. So that's what I do for the flat rate. Uh, anything under a pound would be $695. Anything over a pound would be $895. The, the, the things that are under a pound are USPS first class. Anything over a pound... Uh, would be USPS priority, usually a flat rate envelope, like a legal flat rate or a uh, regular flat rate envelope. So really just go in and check that. Um, and then in your item description, just make sure you come across, come up with a few little bullet points that, you know, what are, what are you offering? Are you offering returns? Do you ship out when one to two business days? Uh, do you wash your clothing before you list them? Start giving some details about your business. That's where you're going to put them in your item description. You don't need to put the title in your item description because your title's right here. Uh, you don't need to, because it's just a waste of time. You're just, a lot of people do that. They copy paste the title and put it here, but they already know that that's what it is because they clicked on it. So you really just want to use your item description for, you know, any flaws, uh, hole, stain, rip, tear, pilling. Um, and then you're going to want to put what you stand for. What What is your shipping policy? What is your return policy and all that? Put that in there. Create it as a template so you don't have to type that out every time. So that could be helpful for you. But, you know, you're just starting out, and you, you got to start somewhere. You know, uh, you don't need to be great to start, but start to be great. So that means you just, it's a constant process of being great, learning. You're here learning, and that's what it's all about. So Marcus says, hey, Shaquana. Uh, right, so Yolanda says, I'm part-time with a full-time job. During peak time, I work seven days a week, so I have not been consistent in my number of listings. Yeah, you know, people who do work full-time, I really applaud you because you're here and you're trying something new. Do you know how many people that work a job and they go, oh, I want to, you know, I, I want to start something, but I just don't have the time or I don't, I don't, you know, have the skills well, for the people like you and you, Yolanda, and other people that have full-time job in this chat right now, they don't have excuses. They don't say, I don't have the time. I'm going to make time. They say, you know, I don't have the skills. They say, I'm going to get skills. So doing that and 
putting yourself out there is going to give you a competitive advantage for the people who are thinking about doing it. You're doing it. So getting to do it is half the battle, you know, especially with a full-time job is like, you're drained. You're tired. I understand. So doing anything extra in your day is exhausting. Even thinking about it, you're exhausted. But just doing it little by little, you will be surprised a year from now, two years from now, you will have a bigger business on eBay that pays you more than what they do at your job. So just really stay committed. eBay is a slow process, slow growth. It took me two and a half years just to be able to sell 25 to 30 items a day. And that's listing every single day. So it does take a little time, but we all start somewhere. Yolanda says, I do list though. I've been on Posh and eBay for three years. That's awesome. Yeah, little by little, you'd be surprised on where you end up. You know, our whole goal here is to really help you go further faster because there's people listing on eBay that have been doing it. I've been doing eBay for 38 years and they're wondering why they don't get sales. Just because you do something long enough doesn't mean you're doing it the right way. And my mission here with this channel is to be able to take everything that I've learned, all the mistakes that I made along the way, condense it down and condense it down into easy, understandable concepts for you then to start taking in and applying to your business. Which brings me to my next point. I don't know if you've heard the news. Maybe you have. Marcus Dixon and I have combined our expertise to provide you with eBay coaching. So we work with you for 10 hours a week, Monday through Friday via Zoom, helping you put the same systems and processes in place that helped us achieve over a little over 320,000 in sales on eBay. Included in that is a reseller spreadsheet and an instant store review. And right now for a limited time, we're offering a seven day free trial. So you could just join, try it out, see if you like the community, join dozens of other members that are growing their store as well by applying the same basic principles that we're teaching here every day. So, and if you do feel like you're part, you, you're getting value, um, it's just $1 a day after that. So, uh, would love to see you there. Would love to help you hit your goals no matter where you are in your reseller life. That is our mission and our goal, Marcus and I as well. So, Maxon, you say, thank you for the store review. The shipping is very eye-opening. Also, I usually have a template going back through my listings to make sure it's there on all of them. Also going to add my brands. Yeah, um, you know, when you're just starting out, it's it just, in theory, right, it just makes so much sense that, oh, I got a bag of clothes from my grandpa. I got a bag of clothes from my aunt. And, and you're like, sweet, you don't even think twice about the brands. And you're just like, I'm going to list them. But that can also be very damaging to your long-term success as a reseller because you may find out that 80% of those clothes don't even sell at all and you're just excited because you got some clothes and, and you want to get going I would suggest just trying to figure out what brands that are in abundance in your area by searching left-hand navigation by radius you could do that on eBay and start typing in the things that you want to sell so you could figure out what other resellers are picking up and what are those selling for so being able to figure out what's in your area being able to build out a brand list based on those items in your area is really going to help you get a good start on eBay uh, a, a bad thing is picking up time and true Croft and Barrow uh, Massimo um, good threads you know all these brands that are lower tier and then starting your eBay store off that way it's it's just gonna hurt so but going for brands that are more bread and butter Carhartt North Face you know things like that is gonna help you build a good solid foundation and some standards in your business so yeah Marcus is in the chat so um, you know our, our mission together is just to really help people uh, when, when we were first starting you know helping people kind of take what we've learned for two plus years and condense it down and to be able to easily understand to start applying today, which is the whole reason why I jump on every week is to really just help you guys get a little bit of those basics dialed in so you can start getting more sales. If you want to know what else is selling in my eBay store and maybe you're new to the channel and you're going, what, what is Bo sale? I don't even know. Well, you can check out this video right here and it's going to go more in detail on the types of items that I'm picking up 
what they're selling for and how I'm finding them. It's going to be really helpful for you because the next time you go out sourcing, you might be able to find some of those items as well. I hope you all have a blessed rest of the week. And if you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section down below. And if you want an eBay store review, leave it down below and we'll get to you next week. Have a blessed week. Take care, everybody. Thank you.